So I'm going to start drawing part of a stratigraphic column here. So we're going to, each one of these bars is 50 centimeters, and I'm going to start um, at the bottom of this bar and draw it. So I have one meter, and this is nicely labeled, uh, facies A, which is described down here. So we have one meter, and it has some, some gravel in it. So I'm going to draw a line like this, and I'll show the lithology. It has some scattered pebbles here. Then we have about half of one of these lines uh, facies D, um, and then uh, some more of facies A. So facies D is mostly sand, but with a little bit of the gravel in it. I'm going to draw it on my column with the grain size showing sand, but when I fill it in, I'm going to represent that it has some pebbles by drawing a pebble like that. We have another half of meter of facies A, which has the gravel. And so I will draw that. And then we have facies D for about a meter. And the way it's sketched here, I think that the, the lower part is finer grained, and then there's the surface, and it gets coarser grained again. So I'm gonna, gonna capture that by having some finer sand. And then some coarser sand. That coarser sand has a few pebbles, but not very many. So I'll put a couple pebbles in there and some dots to represent the sand. So I can also I should also label the facies. So we can label this one facies A, D, A, and then both of these are facies D. Now I have, it looks like, about half the distance of that line uh, represents uh, facies A, and if I go down this way, it is much, much thicker, and if I go up, it gets much thinner, and the facies A goes away. So I'm actually going to, to draw that um, as it's thinning. It needs to go out to the gravel. And then what we can do is because it pinches out all the way over here and it looks like it's maybe a meter thick over here, I'm, I'm going to draw it as a triangle. And put some dots. And that triangle suggests that it varies in thickness um, laterally along the outcrop. Okay. And right here we have a pretty consistent uh, layer of facies E, which um, doesn't have the conglomerate or the pebbles in it. Um, and so that would go up to two and a half meters here. And it actually is a pretty constant thickness. It sort of thickens a little bit here. So I'm going to draw it sort of like this, going to the sand. And this one doesn't have pebbles in it. So even though the grain size is similar to uh, this one before, uh, it's thick enough to be called uh, a new facies. I'm not sure that this, this lower part here might also be facies E. So I'll put an E for facies E. 
And then we go into uh, stasis B, which is pretty, pretty irregular. Um, so we can say that that goes up to, let me make sure I'm not losing anything. So we have one meter, two meters, three meters. So it goes up to three plus a little bit. And that one has these big black areas, which I'm not sure what they are, um, but I'm gonna guess that they are breccia clasts. So I'm gonna make it a little bit coarser because it has a lot of those clasts. Okay, so we have some sand, we have some clasts, we have whatever these black things are. If I was actually looking at this in the field, I would be able to tell what they are. Okay. So then from here, I'm going to let you finish the second part of the stratigraphic column. One thing I am going to add to what I have already is that there's these arrows are showing this place where uh, this bed of facies A cuts out. And so I think that that's probably an erosion surface. And so if I was going to add, draw the ero erosion surface in here between those two beds, I would add a wavy line like that. So basically, um, I don't, I can move my facies E symbols over here. The nice thing about doing it digitally. And then I'm going to draw my wavy line uh, between them to show that I think that that's an unconformity. So that's my, how I might draw it if I was actually in the field. So thanks for watching.